I just want to wish all of you a very Merry Christmas and the most amazing, peaceful and abundant 2023. If you have liked one of our posts this year, if you have shared some of our information, read our blogs, listened to our podcasts, joined a challenge, watched anything in our content, I just want to say thank you so much because it means a lot and you are part of our whole health family. So thank you so much. Once again, it's been a fabulous year. We have so much coming up in 2023, which I'm excited to share with you. So from our family to your family, we just want to wish you a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. This is episode 114. G'day and welcome to the My Voice Notes series. This series came about because of you. So thank you. I was receiving feedback on how you enjoy the realness and rawness of my show and that you connect with my stories and experiences. So I decided to bite my fear on the bum and share with you my most personal series yet. I spend a lot of time reflecting and I usually record my thoughts in my phone, sort of like a journal, and now you will have access to that. Please leave me a five-star review on Apple Podcasts if you enjoy this series because my intention is to inspire you to break free of anything that holds you back and to know that you are not alone. All right, buckle up. Here we go. Hello, beautiful people. Just getting my microphone set up here. (laughs) Welcome to another voice note series. This one's a little bit special because this is more of a requested podcast today. And what the request is, is on the egg retrieval process for IVF or getting pregnant. And the reason that I am doing this is because I am considering egg retrieval. Uh, I am 39 years old. I think most of you know that. And I do want to have children, but I have yet to call in my soul baby daddy. (laughs) He's still on his way. And my soul baby is still on their way. So I have been looking into egg retrieval. And I am a master researcher. I look top and bottom to make sure that I get the information that I need. Now, the first thing that I began doing from last year is deciding that, yep, I will have a child and I will have a child in a near future. And the age that I think of is around the age of 42. There's a few things that I still want to do before I have a child, because when I have a child, I want to be able to have the flexibility to work two to four hours a day. I want to have the mindset of, yes, everything is in order. I've achieved things that I want to achieve. So there's still a couple of things that I need to tick off before that. And I just want to be a present conscious mum when I do give birth. And I do want to be yeah, around as much as possible. And yeah, around that age, that number is where I'm looking at. So also around that age, I feel like I'll have gotten a lot of things out of my system and then I will be okay to just wait on my child and take them to this lesson and take them to that soccer game and take them over here and go camping with them and go on holidays with them because I know that that is a huge change in someone's life and I'm just so blessed that I have witnessed my friends have children from the age of (laughs) 16 onwards. So in the late teens, in 20s and late 20s and 30s, I've got to witness every single stage of parenthood and to see what it actually entails. And it is a lot and it is a huge change. So I just feel so fortunate that I have been able to witness these things so that I can understand what changes I want to make, where I want to live, what I want to introduce and 
the kind of birth and the kind of parent that I want to be, the kind of birth, sorry, that I wanted to have and all of that sort of stuff. So when I realized this, the first thing that I do, as most of you know, because I've had so many health conditions and illness and just things pop up in life is I like to heal my body and I like to make sure that it is at an optimal level. So what I began last year is a more in-depth internal healing process where I went to two of my functional health doctors. One is a naturopath and one is an Ayurvedic doctor. And I went to both of them and I said, okay, I want to prep my body for motherhood in the next few years. What do I need to do? What, where do I start? And so they were amazing. And they said, great, there's these things that we need to look at. There's these sorts of tests that you can do so that we can check your levels. And there's these sorts of things that when it comes to Ayurveda, there's these treatments that we can do as well. So that is exactly where I began. So if you are looking at egg retrieval as well, I highly recommend that you do some internal body work, which includes a whole lot of consciousness and health focus just to understand any toxicity or stress that's coming into your life and to eliminate that. When we did my blood tests, we found so shockingly that my vitamin D level was so low and we, my naturopath instantly put me on a vitamin D supplement. We retested after a few months and my vitamin D level was even lower. So then she gave me a different supplement that was to work a lot better with my body. And when we retested that after a few more months, then my vitamin D levels were finally at an optimal level. So it was so interesting because I am a sun bunny. I am tanned, but obviously the way that my body absorbs vitamin D needs a little bit of help. So that's where I began. Ayurvedic doctor. She gave me a whole bunch of cool stuff. (laughs) which is amazing. And she gave me things to help myself as well and to balance out my body and hormones and all of that sort of stuff. I was fortunate enough to have a pretty great blood test. So everything looked really good. There's also other tests that functional doctors can run. And there's also, if you have a partner, things that they can be doing and testing for as well to make sure that they are also healthy because If you choose, you know, your baby daddy, it's great to do the journey together so that that way both of your bodies are at an optimal level. If you're like me and you don't have a soul baby daddy yet, then you just do it for yourself. So then I began to look at egg retrieval and oh my gosh, there's so much information. So I began doing research myself. I also reached out to friends. I had friends reach out to me as well with suggestions and I found that this egg retrieval process, it's like a wedding or a funeral. These places will charge exorbitant fees because you're vulnerable. (laughs) So if you are thinking of having children after the age of 35, I highly recommend that you start saving money for egg retrieval if you think that this might be an option for you. Because I think the fees come to over $10,000, something along those lines. I'll go through a few of the costs with you. But yes, this is not a cheap thing to do. So that's one thing I want to get across. If you're looking at egg retrieval, step one, your internal health, get that sorted, detox, whatever you need to do, rebuild. Two, make sure you have a lot of money put aside for all of the costs that are going to come into play. And then what I recommend for step number three is to reach out to people and ask people for their advice on egg retrieval places to go to. I booked in at this one place and my friend suggested I go to the place that she went to 
and it was like night and day. I got treated so differently and I felt so cared for and with a lot more effort put in. And then I had another friend tell me that she booked a consult and that had a big fee attached to it. And I said, no, hold on, you shouldn't pay for that fee because the people that I've gone to, they don't charge a fee for a consultation. So it's really important, those of you listening that want egg retrieval, to do research. And then I spoke to my sister-in-law and because her situation wasn't elective like mine, she didn't have costs, guys. (laughs) So yeah, there's a whole bunch of different scenarios that you should really look into. Now, when you decide on who you're going to use and the place that will help you with your egg retrieval journey, then the fun stuff begins. So the very first thing is the consultation. And this is where you'll speak to a nurse and the nurse will go through everything with you. And that, I think that was like a 60 to 90 minute consultation. So it was pretty long. And that was really great. It gave me a lot of clarity in what's going on. So I'll give you a list of the things that you will need to be doing throughout the egg retrieval process. So you'll have the initial doctor consultation. It's really great to get your doctor involved as well to let them know what you're doing. So I went straight to my doctor and I said, hey, I'm thinking of doing egg retrieval. And she said, yes, Helen, you should do it. And I was like, okay. (laughs) So she knows my age. And so I think she thought it would be a great decision because as you all are aware, we do lose the amount of eggs as we age. So it's just a safety net, you know, it's just a safety net. I do have faith in my body and I do feel like my reproductive system is so amazingly healthy and I have not yet retrieved any eggs, but I'm going through the steps, the process leading up to that. It's been interesting and I'll share more with you. And I am, I think, 80% certain that I will retrieve eggs. So the consultation, speak to your doctor, speak to also the egg retrieval people and have your consultation there. The next thing that goes on is tests, blood tests. OMG, I had so many blood tests. So there's a whole lot of tests that you need to do. (laughs) And let me go through some of these tests so that you know what you're working with. All right, here they are. So some of these pre-treatment tests and screens are blood tests that you have to take on day two to five of your menstrual cycle. So the timing is impeccable. If you don't track your cycle yet, please do. Just use the health app on the iPhone. I don't pay for an extra app. The health app is perfect. It's got all of the goodness. I think maybe Android phones might have a menstrual cycle tracking app as well so you have a whole bunch of tests which they'll (laughs) which they'll tell you to do and it's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven so eleven different things that they give you a blood test for and I always love giving blood or getting blood tests because I always feel like oh I'm gonna get fresh new oxygenated blood coming into my body very soon So those blood tests, one of them cost, I think, around $90. I can't remember exactly which one it was, but there is a blood test that does cost money, which is why it's important to make sure you have money put aside. Then there is an ultrasound that needs to take place, a baseline pelvic ultrasound, which you need to do at day five to nine of your cycle. And don't try to remember these because your doctor and your whoever you're working with, your clinic will give you all of this information. I just am literally giving you a basic outline of the process up until egg retrieval, just so that that way you can also do your research and hear other opinions. Now, the ultrasound can be a little bit uncomfortable. I was so lucky. I had this older lady. She was in her late 50s and she was from Brazil. And we had such a great 
conversation and she made a situation that could have been so awkward so comfortable and again I was lucky because when we did that ultrasound she was really happy and she's like wow look at the shape of your ovaries or look at the shape of your cervix I love that that looks beautiful and she was just so amazing. Her energy was so great. She made me feel so confident about myself. And she was like, do you want to look at your eggs? Like I've got to count your eggs or something along those lines. And she was like, wow, look at how many you have. You have so many eggs. And I was like, where are they? And she was showing me the eggs. And I was like, wow, I don't know how you're counting those because I'm already lost, but I will just believe you. And I, when I left that appointment, I went to the front and I said, can you, can I leave some positive feedback for that lady that did my ultrasound? And they said, oh, did you know that she's actually a doctor as well? And I was like, oh, interesting. Maybe that's why I got so much great information. So yeah, always have beautiful energy guys around everything that you're doing. Meditate, manifest, Do all the things that you need to do so you can keep bringing in some beautiful energy, beautiful souls and beautiful people into your life. It really does pass on. So that ultrasound was (laughs) better than a pap smear. Let's say that. Better than a pap smear. So the next step is where I am actually up to. So got all the test results back. And then the next step is to go to a specialist appointment, which this one costs money. So depending on your specialist, it's around the $300 mark, can be rebated from memory. So that's the next step where you take your test results to, and then that specialist will go through the next steps with you of any hormones that you'll need to inject, how much your dosages and what the next steps are for you because we're all different. We are all different. And I do have some questions for those of you that sent in questions to my Instagram page when I announced if this would be a great podcast topic. (laughs) So that is the next step. And then after you see the specialist, then you have some time to do these injections, which you'll have to administer yourself. And then after you do all of that is when the egg retrieval process will take place. So the egg retrieval process itself does not take long at all. You do have to go under, but I've heard from everyone I've spoken to and the nurses that it just takes about 10 minutes, but you should take someone with you so that they can drive you back home from the procedure. And that is the procedure that costs a lot of money from memory, it's around anywhere from six to eight thousand dollars, and this one I think does not have rebates. And that fee also includes, well, with my clinic, the first six months of storage, and then the the medications. Sorry, that the specialist gives you. They also have a cost of around three thousand dollars from memory. So there's a hospital bed fee which costs around a thousand dollars. There's an anaesthetist fee, which costs around $400, a freezing fee, ongoing storage fees. So (laughs) you have to pay to store your eggs, ladies. So every six months, it might be around the $200 to $250 mark. These are roundabout figures. And also remember, I am not a doctor. I am literally just passing on my journey and my research with you just to help you out. What else do you need to know? So the pre-treatment pathway, the one that I was just talking about, everything you need to do before doing the actual egg retrieval is usually around six to eight weeks. Okay, so it's not a quick procedure and just got to be mindful of the timing when you book these appointments, the blood tests and stuff because they have to be at certain days of your cycle. That's pretty much all you need to know for now when it comes to starting an egg retrieval process. Now, some of the questions that I received, oh, let me just have a quick look at them. What fertility tests should I get done? Now, remember I said I'm not a doctor. However, when you go see your doctor, you should ask them about your history and what you might need because if you do have any other conditions, then there might be other things that you should test. I also recommend you speak to a naturopath and an Ayurvedic doctor. 
I love everything about the Ayurvedic system and they do have beautiful cleanses, detoxes and things that you can do if you are out of balance in your body to get yourself well first. So try to allow yourself a lot of time to give yourself internal healing work, okay? Work with a coach, do any release work, release any blockages that are going on, heal and deal with any issues from your past and start with a clean slate so that that way your baby has a beautiful, clean environment to be drawn into, okay? I love doing personal development work. I've done a lot of self-development work with different coaches, which is why I became one myself. So make sure that you heal yourself as well first, okay? Internally means your mind and your body. Another question is side effects of the hormone treatment. So with any hormone treatment, there is usually side effects depending on how your body reacts to it. So you know, there's things like weight gain, there's things like mood disorders, instability. There's definitely side effects when anything hormonal comes into play. So the best thing that I would advise is when you do come up to the injection process for hormones, that you do allow yourself some time to just be able to have less on your plate at that time in your life. So maybe you'll call for taking a week off work if you can. Maybe you can halve your workload. So just be kind to yourself. You know, we are preparing our body for a baby. So be selfish with that and make that a priority. Try to eliminate as much stress as possible because you don't want any stress in this process at all. You want it to be joyful and you want it to be fun and I totally understand how it can be stressful because just reading all the information started to stress me out. But then I was like, no, there's a higher purpose here. This is just for a spiritual being and I want to create the healthiest environment that I can and retrieve the healthiest eggs that I can for the time when I am ready to call my baby in and I will definitely try natural. However, it is great to know that I will have some eggs retrieved. How many eggs was one of the questions. Now, my doctor said that they would love at least 20 eggs. And so when she saw the eggs in my ovaries, one had 11 and one had 10. No, one had 11 and one had 12. So it's 22. So I will keep you updated on this process, guys. I will give you the next steps all the way until the end of egg retrieval <laughs> once I get through it. But this is the very beginning of how the egg retrieval process starts. And I hope this episode gave you a lot more clarity. And if you do have any questions or would love to share your feedback, please do on my Instagram page. Until next time, I will keep doing my research. And if there is any topics of episodes that you would love for me to talk about, please DM me message me on Instagram and I will get that on the show for you. Bye for now. Thank you times infinity for spending time with me. It really means a lot. Putting yourself first will really help escalate your goals, your dreams, and I love being on the journey with you. So make sure you come and tell me on my Instagram at whole health, which is H O L underscore health and comment below this podcast photo to share your thoughts on my show today and if you enjoyed it please leave me a five-star review on itunes or spotify so that i can keep bringing amazing value to you i'm sending you truckloads of love power and joy bye for now